Good morning to the class of 2020. We are only halfway through junior year and it's time to start thinking about picking your classes for senior year. This morning we'll be discussing the course selection process for 12th grade, highlighting required classes, going over scheduling options, and hopefully helping you feel prepared to complete and submit your course selection sheet for 12th grade. You should have all received a course selection sheet this morning in Northway. You will have a week to get that course selection sheet filled out completely, signed by the appropriate individuals, and turned into student services by January 16th. You will also have between today and January 16th to get online and enter your course selections in eSchool Student Access. And then after you complete, complete your sheet and turn it into student services, we will be pulling you out of an English class to talk to you further about your course selections and discuss your career planning. Um, and we will pull you out automatically out of that English class so you do not need to schedule an appointment with your counselor. We will be pulling you out individually on specific days between January 17th and January 25th. So your course selection sheet has an area for required classes. Um, those are going to be near the top and then towards the bottom is where you're going to fill in the different electives that you would like to take in 12th grade. We also encourage you to really use the back side of your sheet that lists out all of the classes that we have here at North. You can use that to rank your electives in order of preference before you put those on the front of your sheet. You also um, should see a spot on the back of the sheet for you to get um, an, a science teacher signature and a math teacher signature. If you do wish to take a math or a science course, we do ask that you do get the recommendation and signature of that math or science teacher who you currently have in order to um, you know, know if that's an appropriate placement for next year. Um, you do need to get a parent signature and a student signature on the front bottom of the sheet. So please make sure that you get those two signatures on the bottom and fill the sheet out completely before you turn it into student services. The class of 2020 does have pretty specific graduation requirements. You need to earn 24 credits to get your diploma. So that means that you have to get six credits every year of high school. Um, you do get a half credit for each semester long class that you pass. The class of 2020 requires four credits in English. So that would be English 9, English 10, English 11, and then a full year of English 12 of your choice. You need two credits in social studies, including a full year of US history, a semester of government, and a half credit of world studies or a social studies elective. You need three credits in math, including algebra and geometry, and then two credits in science, one of which needs to be biology. You must take career planning and pass that to graduate, as well as a semester of health, a semester of consumer ed. You must be enrolled in PE every single semester of high school unless you qualify for a PE waiver or you are in health or driver's ed. Those are the only um, times that you would not need to be enrolled in a PE class. The rest of what you take is considered elective, so that would be 11 and a half credits towards your 24. One of those elective credits does need to be in um, world language, fine arts, or uh, career and tech ed. The elective classes that you choose to take, um, you know, should be those that are things that you're interested in, possibly pursuing after high school, um, to help you kind of decide what you're going to do in the future. Four-year colleges are going to expect to see a transcript with additional core courses, so it's always a good idea to take more classes in English, math, science, and social studies to meet requirements. 
Generally, colleges require um, at least three credits in science, math, and social studies, but it, it is important to do your research and check specific requirements for each university that you might want to apply to um, so that you have a better chance of ad admission. Some schools may also have a specific foreign language requirement, like two years of a single foreign language, for example. Since we do not require foreign language for graduation, it will be up to you to enroll in the amount that you may need for college. If you have any questions regarding college entrance requirements, um, don't hesitate to reach out to admissions offices at different colleges and ask questions, or talk with your school counselor and we'd be happy to help you out. Starting next school year, all early college courses offered in District 100 will be weighted with an additional point for a grade of C or above. Um, early college courses include dual credit courses, advanced placement courses, and courses for articulated college credit. So to give an example, if you were to receive an A in advanced placement government, you would earn five points for the A in that class instead of four points because it is an early college class. However, if you earned an A in regular government, um, you would only get four points for that A because it's not an early college class. Um, weighted grades for any early college class taken throughout high school will be on the student's transcript, not just early college classes taken senior year. So overall, students who challenge themselves in our most rigorous courses will have an opportunity to you know, earn a higher GPA than students who do not enroll in these types of courses. All early college classes are bold and italicized on your course selection sheet so you can easily identify all of our courses that will be weighted next school year. It is important to note that both weighted and non-weighted GPA will be available to seniors next year. However, class rank is still going to be based on a student's unweighted GPA. If you have any questions about this, please don't hesitate to talk to your counselor. BNHS is going to offer eight blended classes next school year. Blended classes combine traditional teaching and virtual learning, so classes may not meet every day of the week. Students may spend class time doing online assignments, working in groups, or other activities that don't necessarily require them to physically be in the classroom environment. The blended offerings for next school year include geometry, chemistry, creative writing, professional writing and communication, advanced placement statistics, advanced placement physics one, anatomy and physiology, and ancient world history. Um, you will notice that your course selection sheet will show both blended and non-blended options for these courses. Selecting a blended section does not guarantee that you will be enrolled in a blended course because seats will be limited. Students who select a blended course must be responsible and make adequate progress in the course throughout the semester, even though they will not meet as a class daily. Um, all blended classes are indicated on your course selection sheet and have an asterisk next to the title. So now we're going to get into the requirements that you need for senior year. These are American government, English, and PE, and that is it. So everything else that you pick is essentially going to be an elective um, in your schedule. For American government, you have two options. You can select either regular American government or advanced placement government, which, what, which does give you the opportunity to take that advanced placement exam and potentially get college credit. You do need to have your U.S. history teacher sign off on this area with their recommendation of either regular government or AP government. There are lots of different English options for your senior year. So you're going to want to take a look at what these are, talk to your English teacher about the different choices and the differences among these. Many of these English classes are a semester long, so you'd be selecting two of them in those cases. There are a few that are a full credit, 
Um, one of those is British Lit, which is the first one listed here. All the rest of these are a semester long. I did mention that a couple of these are blended for next year. Those are creative writing and professional writing and communication. There will be three full year AP English options available next year and I'm going to describe each of those a little bit so you can have a better idea what to expect from those classes. Um, the first one is AP English Language and Composition and this course focuses on the development and revision of evidence-based analytic and argumentative writing and the rhetorical analysis of nonfiction texts. The next one, AP English Literature and Composition, focuses on reading, analyzing, and writing about imaginative literature, like fiction, poetry, and drama from different periods. AP Seminar is a class where students investigate real-world issues from multiple perspectives, gathering and analyzing information from various sources in order to develop credible and valid arguments. So these are all excellent options to consider for your English class for senior year. Make sure you talk to your current English teacher if one of these might be of interest to you. Your course selection sheet has four PE options available each semester, including lifetime wellness, advanced personal wellness, healthy lifestyles, and zero hour PE. The zero hour PE for next year is going to be lifetime wellness. Um, we suggest that you only select zero hour PE if you can commit to having an eight period day and will be motivated to arrive to school before 7.20 a.m. daily. Students must be enrolled in PE every semester of high school unless you are in health, driver's ed, or like I said earlier, qualify for a PE waiver for athletics or band. Please submit a PE waiver form if you qualify and wish to waive out of PE for either semester. Remember, if you decide not to go out to a, for a sport though and you drop out of one, um, either before the season starts or mid-season that it will be your responsibility to notify your counselor so that you can be added to a PE class at that time. If you plan to attend college after high school, it is highly recommended that you continue taking math your senior year. Students may think because we don't require it senior year that it is not needed. However, we find that our students are more prepared for college if they take more math in high school. Also, depending upon your career path, it may be helpful to enroll in additional science courses. We only require two, but having at least three is ideal from a college perspective. Colleges and universities generally do have specific guidelines about how many classes they require in all core areas. So make sure you check with your college and you know, or, or check college websites that you're considering to make sure that you meet the specific requirements they have. Colleges often want to see at least three credits in social studies, so you may need to take additional social studies in 12th grade if you haven't enrolled in many social studies classes so far in high school. Taking multiple years of foreign language in high school is sometimes a requirement for college admission. Again, checking the websites or speaking to admissions reps will help you um, better understand if foreign language is indeed a requirement for a specific college. You have multiple scheduling options to consider for senior year. If you are on track with your credits, you can enroll in a semester or a year-long study hall to have more time to study and complete homework. Students can also opt for a late start or an early release, which means that you can start school after first hour or leave school after sixth hour. Again, this is dependent upon your credits and requirements still needed. Scheduling can also allow for you to enroll in Rock Valley courses while still in high school, either online or on campus. Feel free to discuss um, all these different options with your counselor if interested and to make sure that you're on track with your credits to be able to allow for these different options. 
Students who will earn 24 credits at the end of their seventh semester of high school are eligible for early graduation. Again, students must meet all requirements and credits by the end of first semester of senior year in order to be considered an early graduate. Students interested in graduating early must submit an early graduation form by March 15th to the Student Services Office in order to be approved for early graduation. Early graduation requests that are made after March 15th will need to be approved by the District 100 School Board. So it is important that you talk to your counselor and your parent or guardian early about this option so that you don't have to get school board approval later. Please also review your credits and plans with your school counselor before applying for early graduation so that we can ensure that you have the credits necessary to be able to do so. It's highly recommended that you talk to your teachers when completing your course selection sheet, ask questions about classes you're considering, and make sure you select your courses with purpose and care. Check out the new online course catalog for easy access to course information and descriptions. The website is courses.district100.com. This is going to especially be helpful when you're looking at the back of your course selection sheet and you see a listing of all those elective classes. It doesn't have space for descriptions of those, of those classes, so this online course catalog will give you an opportunity to look up some more in-depth information about classes and make sure you're eligible for those classes and seeing if those are something that you are indeed interested in taking. To select your courses and save them online, you will need to start at the District 100 website, which is www.district100.com. From there, you will click on the Resources tab and then click on Student Access. Then you can log into Student Access using your student ID number and date of birth. You must enter a lowercase s and then your six-digit student ID. So for example, if my student ID number is 999999, I would put that with an S before it. And then the six digit date of birth. So if your birthday is January 14th, 2002, you would enter 011402. After putting in your student ID number and date of birth, you will then be taken to the area to add classes. Once you're logged into Student Access, you will click Classes on the top and then click Requests and it will bring you to all of the academic departments that we have available. You will click Edit next to the department and then it will show you a list of all the courses that we have within that department. When you find a class that you want to add to your requests, you're going to check a box that you're going to see next to the class name and then hit Save. Um, you'll then be able to go back to a different department, um, check a box next to another class, and then save that class. Just make sure you hit save often so that it, it keeps all of the classes that you're adding. You also can uncheck a box next to a class if you've changed your mind and would like to delete that class so that it will not be included in your course requests. Please make sure that you're adding your core required classes as well as all of your elective classes when you're doing your online selections. We want to know what you want to take for the entire year, um, both required and elective. We do want to make you aware of a new option that the district has available for students who are significantly ahead in credits. Um, seniors are required, like, no, like normal, to take a minimum of six classes for first semester but the new option is that for second semester, students only need to take a minimum of four classes. Again, this is really only an option for students who are quite ahead in their credits, so you're gonna want to talk more about this option with your counselor at your individual appointment if it's something that you're considering. We also don't necessarily recommend students taking a shortened day second semester if you're planning to go to a four-year college because it's going to be recommended that you're taking more core classes and, and still challenging yourself with rigorous coursework. So again, 
you are required to take a minimum of six classes during first semester, but then you are only required to take a minimum of four classes during second semester of your senior year. But we can definitely talk more about that option after you've saved your online selections and we meet out of your English class. So as a reminder, your course selection sheet is due to student services by Wednesday, January 16th. You're gonna just turn that right into the uh, office there by Mrs. Maloza's desk. You can definitely turn it in before January 16th, but that is the deadline. You also have to enter your online course selections by Wednesday, January 16th so that those can all be in eSchool before you sit down and meet with us. So individual counselor meetings are going to be held January 17th through the 25th, and that's when we're going to be pulling you out of your English 11 class to talk more in depth about your courses, your plans, and any other questions that you might have, whether that be about blended classes, um, Rock Valley classes, graduating early. So all of those types of items can be discussed in that individual counselor meeting that we will be holding with you. So your school counselors that you will be meeting with are Mrs. Getty, who has the last names A through FL, Mrs. Freeman, who has last names FM through LE, Mrs. Bowsman, who has LF through RI, and Ms. Volkman, who has RJ through Z. We definitely look forward to talking with the class of 2020 and making sure that you are all on track and picking the right classes to help you for your future. Thank you.